to be with us today. I would like to present first the uh, UNEP SPP activities and I will be joined by my colleague Laura who will present uh, the eco-labeling component of our work. As you can see on the screen, we have two main objectives. The first one is to provide policy support and technical assistance to countries to implement SPP and eco-labeling policies, so it's really work with uh, the governments at national level. And then we have a second objective, which is more global, which is related to the promotion of SPP at world level through increased cooperation between key stakeholders and a better understanding of the potential benefits and impacts of SPP. And this is done through a project, which is a program which is called the 10 YFP, 10 Year Framework of Program on Sustainable Public Procurement, which is one of the six programs of this major international initiative, while the action at national level is done through three projects, which, which are called STEL, SPP and Eco Labeling, uh, EAP Green, and the one we're focusing on today, which is Asia Pacific, GPP and Eco Labeling, which is working at regional level. So in the framework, in the frameworks of the, the SPELL and EAP uh, Green Project, which are supported by the economic, the uh, EC, the uh, European Union, <coughs> which is a major and uh, was it, uh, the, 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 the main contributor to this project. We're supporting 14 countries worldwide, as I said, in assisting them in on SPP implementation through the development of uh, national action plans. As you can see in blue, uh, these are the countries outside Eastern Europe. Two of them are located in Asia, it's Mongolia and Vietnam, and we have a large number in Latin America, no? and two countries also in Africa. In Eastern Europe, we have three countries, Belarus, Ukraine, and Moldova. So, I would like to give you an update on the implementation in Asia. In Mongolia, we're doing the work in partnership with uh, a project called PAGE, which is Partnership for Action on Green Economy, with our colleagues from uh, Geneva, from uh, Economic and Trade Division, or uh, Trade Branch. <clears throat> so far, we have completed status assessment and market analysis, and we are uh, doing legal review and an action plan and are working on those two uh, outputs currently <clears throat> with uh, so far uh, good results and, and we're satisfied with the, the rate of uh, progress of this uh, project. In Vietnam, we have uh, completed uh, SWOT analysis of eco-labeling and we are uh, in the, the phase of finalization of legal review and market analysis. I'd like to give you also uh, regional updates, and uh, I will let my colleague Laura do that. Good morning and afternoon, everyone. Um, just to give you a regional update on the activities of the uh, SPEL project, we are currently working in two regions, in Asia Pacific and Latin America. And this regional cooperation component under the SPEL project aims to increase the operating efficiency by sharing experiences and building expertise while combining both approaches. We also aim to drive opportunity for trade by increasing programs alignment across countries and also to develop tools and approaches that will foster cooperation at a regional level. So within Asia Pacific, the main goal of our project is to develop common core criteria that could be used by um, stakeholders in the region, either for public or private procurement to develop standards and also for using eco-labels. And as part of this project, which we're currently working with AIT, the Asian Institute of Technology, we have identified key opportunities for pilot products for the Asia Pacific region based on the potential to reduce environmental impacts, the relevance for GPP and trade, and um, the existing uh, common core criteria that is in the region and where we can uh, build further collaboration for specific products. Um, the report is uh, soon to be launched and we will inform you once it is available for your comments and review. 
Thank you, Laura. We'll now give the floor back to Farid. So I mentioned our work uh, in the framework of the 10-year framework of programs, the 10YFP. Uh, so for those of, new, those of you who don't know what 10YFP is, it was uh, launched at the Rio Plus 20 conference, and it reaffirmed that sustainable consumption production is a cornerstone of sustainable development. Uh, it has a, a vision whereby we believe that fundamental changes in the way society produce and consume are needed, are indispensable for achieving global sustainable development. And uh, there in Rio, it was reaffirmed that all countries should promote sustainable consumption and production patterns, and also that all major groups should play an active role in changing those unsustainable patterns. So uh, after this uh, vision was reaffirmed, the 10YFE was officially launched. Uh, and right now it's a growing uh, action and framework of action to enhance international cooperation, cooperation with the aim of accelerating the shift towards SCP patterns, both in developed and developing countries. How does it work? It works through uh, support, through capacity building, and by providing technical and financial assistance, uh, in particular to developing countries to operate uh, this shift. <clears throat> Within the framework of this uh, program, this major uh, initiative, uh, the SPP program uh, plays a major role. It's, it is one of the six programs of this framework. It was launched officially on April 1st, 2014 in New York. This, its objectives are to build a case for SPP. We need to improve the knowledge on SPP and we need to show that it can be an effective tool to promote a green economy and sustainable development. And we need also to support the implementation of SPP on the ground, by example, for example, by allowing better access to capacity building resources and improved coordination between SPP and stakeholders. The uh, program, the SPP program of the 10 wave has an action plan. Currently we're working on the biennial 2016-2017. You can see on the screen the uh, working groups uh, that have been active, uh, established uh, with in the framework of uh, four work areas. You can see <clears throat> that this work area is target implementing SPP on the ground, which is the first priority. Then we have the assessment of uh, implementation and impact. It's really an issue because we don't know how much of uh, SPP or GPP is taking place. What is the percentage of uh, green or sustainable procurement in public procurement? So we need to monitor SPP implementation. We, develop, we need to develop a framework for this, and this is what we try to do in the framework of Group 2A. We need to measure the impacts. We don't know when we do SPP what are the impacts on the reduction of GAG emissions, on the creation of uh, green jobs. So we need to develop the metrics for that, and this is what we try to do in Group 2B. And also we try to promote SPP best practices, learn from each other, because we know that uh, some are more advanced than others, and that we can learn from each other and improve our practices by looking at what others are doing. We are also establishing an ad hoc group on the measurement of SDG 12.7, or actually the indicator 12.71, which is related to the target on SPP in the framework of the SDGs. In work area three, we try to identify obstacles and promote innovative solutions. For example, we work on how we can include small and medium enterprises in SPP uh, in a better uh, manner. And Finally, we have a group on the collaboration with the private sector uh, by which we try to promote uh, supply, uh, sustainable supply chains and also make sure that eco-labels are more broadly used in uh, SPP and also promote resource-efficient business models and circular economy. We also have cross-cutting uh, research activities. For example, we uh, produce every three years the global review of SPP uh, GPP and currently we're working on the the new edition, which will come out uh, later this year. <clears throat> and of, of course, we have a number of, uh, of communication work and uh, in the framework of the SCP Clearinghouse. So we welcome your participation in the groups. Uh, you can see on the screen 
the active current active working groups where that you could uh, join and participate to this exchange of knowledge and, and bring your expertise to these various groups. I'm not going to uh, detail those groups. You have them on the screen, but you please uh, don't hesitate to contact us uh, should you be interested to join. And as Farid already mentioned, um, it's Laura Guccione here. Um, we have the working group 4B2, which actually uh, supports both SPP and Ecolabel at the joint implementation. Um, in addition to that, this is from the Consumer Information Program. Um, we also have a working group on Ecolabels Type 2, which also could be of your interest. Um, we're aiming to strengthen and harmonize existing schemes and sharing lessons from practice. This uh, working group will be launched uh, soon, hopefully in this um, quarter of the year. And we will also have a regional chapter for Asia, where we aim to promote information exchange platforms and strengthen the communication channels for all the actors in the region. So please, um, if uh, you're interested, feel free to join. The information is on the bottom of the slide. You can see it there. In addition to that, we are producing guidelines for product sustainability information under the work of this uh, 10YFP program. Um, we have a webinar recording introducing the guidelines, which are available on the website. And we'll also have a global consultation coming up. And we'll be publishing it on the website. So if you're interested, you're also very welcome to share your um, comments on these guidelines. Thank you, Laura. We're now going to present briefly the Asia-Pacific GPPEL project, which is supported by Ministry of Environmental Protection of China and the Korean Environmental Industry and Technology Institute. The aim is to strengthen the capacities and improve the knowledge on green public procurement and eco-labeling in the ASEAN Plus 3 region. Uh, we try to strengthen SPP and eco-labeling in Asia-Pacific, mainly on trying to on transferring the expertise of more developed countries, more advanced countries like China, Japan, South Korea, uh, who are combining the use of SPP and eco-labeling in a very efficient uh, way. <clears throat> we try also to enhance South-South collaboration on those topics and also uh, ensure the most uh, effective participation of Asia-Pacific countries in the activities of the 10YFP SPP program that we just mentioned. In terms of activities, we uh, have a, a number of achievements. First, we created the Asia-Pacific network of SPP and eco-labeling experts and policy makers. It's the first network of this kind. It uh, gathered already in uh, many places since 2013 in Seoul, in Bangkok, in Beijing, in different conferences. Yesterday, la sorry, last year, we had a training in Kuala Lumpur on the experience of the most advanced countries. And we will have also a training uh, scheduled this year also on the experience of uh, the most advanced countries outside the Asia-Pacific uh, region. We also developed a number of case studies, and, and you can find them uh, online. And we are also uh, sharing the knowledge, as I mentioned, through a number of uh, regional capacity building schemes, and you have the information on, on in the slide. We also try to establish linkages with the 10 wfp SPP program through uh, by providing case studies and by participating in the working groups that we mentioned uh, earlier. So again, don't hesitate to uh, take part and be an active member of uh, this network, which is really there to promote GPP and the good linkage with uh, Ecolabeling. How can you participate then? Uh, please join, first of all. Uh, you will be able to keep abreast of Asia-Pacific GPP and Ecolabeling news, uh, share your news with the network. We have a forum on LinkedIn that has been established, and uh, this will facilitate the exchange of information. Uh, this will allow you to start discussion and exchange with peers. We give you the link to the LinkedIn group, so please don't hesitate to click and join. Uh, you will be able to share news, publication, and local events with the network, uh, inform us on your information, your activities, and also present your organization's work during, this web during webinars as we are trying to do today. 
we also presented the 10 YFP working groups and uh, we uh, look forward to your participation in those groups. Thank you very much, Farid. We'll now give the floor to our first panelist, Mr. Hiroyuki Kobayashi from Ecomark Office uh, at Japan Environment Associate Administration. Um, um, so, Mr. Hiroyuki? Yes, you? I'm here. Okay, hi. Hi. So, you're now uh, the presenter, and I will let you uh, introduce your presentation. Okay. So, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Hiroyuki Kobayashi from Japan Ecomark, uh, Japan Ecomark office. So, uh, thank you very much for having me today. I'm very happy to share with you our experience between GP and Japan Ecomark. So, let's start with a brief introduction of Ecomark programs. Just a moment, it doesn't work. Okay. Now the slide is coming up. Okay, I hope everybody see that my same slide. And uh, ECMA program is a voluntary certification scheme so managed by a non-profit organization, Japan Environment Association, the known as the GEA. And the GEA was established in 1977 as an incorporated public uh, foundation body to the related to the environment agency. And 12 years later, in 1989, the ECOMAC program was started. And now we have the 262 criteria, including uh, four service criteria. And uh, on our criteria development process, so uh, criteria level is considered for roughly top 20% of market share. So I would say that it's the leadership level. And as of the end of last month, we have the more than 5,600 certified products and the roughly 1,600 companies. And how big is the market today to the market in Japan? So market scale of the certified product in 2012, uh, it's 44 trillion Japanese yen, which is corresponding to the US dollar, 44 billion US dollars. And as everybody knows, uh, we are type 1 eco leveling, so according to ISO 40,024. And also, we are a member of the Green uh, Global Eco Leveling Network, Shen, so which is an international network, 29 type 1 eco leveling members showing so far. And I summarize some characteristics uh, of ECOMARC programs. And uh, it's coming. Okay, first characteristic characteristics is that, of course, we take a life cycle thinking over the product and the services. And also, we look at the other four additional areas for our criteria development process of resource saving, uh, greenhouse gases, so hazardous substance, and the biodiversity. And we set up five committees for our decision making. So each committee has its role of ECOMAC management. And all committees consist of the expert in the environment, preservation, education, as well as economics. And also represented from the consumer organization involving. So to involve lots of stakeholders in our management, we keep it transparent and credible. And now ECOMA program is operated uh, without any financial support uh, from the government. So ECOMA program is learning. 100% by annual fee and application fee from the companies. And Ecomark has very high awareness of 91% in Japan. So according to our survey so conducted on the internet in 2015 last year, so including the more than 5,000 people. In the last three, uh, we have the 10 friends organization that we have signed MLA. So let's look at the uh, uh, green passing law in Japan. In May 2000, the central government of Japan, they imposed 
the commitment to the GPP by enacting the green passing law, the main objective of the act is that to encourage all society sectors, public, private, and citizens to shift the demand towards eco-friendly goods without encouraging total increase of demand. So, in other words, to easy saying, the government aims at encouraging the market from demand side using big buying power when balance government procurement, which is estimate estimate about 20% of GDP. I think the same as other countries. And now I'm going to show you the quick framework of green passing law. Uh, according to our Green Passing Law, uh, Article 6, maybe slide is coming up right now. Okay, so from Article 6, uh, government is required to establish the basic policy every year, including the designated procurement items and the evaluation criteria. So those are revised every year. And then on Article 7, that those requirement is a one country request for the old central government agency. So all the central government agencies are required to draw, uh, prepare, and announce uh, their own procurement policy based on base, uh, based on the basic policy. They also they have to uh, draft uh, evaluation criteria by themselves. But of course, no government agency. I can draft uh, evaluation criteria from the scratch. So most of the central government agency utilize evaluation criteria uh, written in the basic policy as their own the procurement policy. And agency and the organizations have to the stick to the their procurement policies they made for their procurement, and they keep track of the old procurement record. And at the end of the end of the fiscal year, they have to report their procurement records to the environment minister, and the ministry of ministry of environment compiles all records and publishes it on the on, uh, publishes it on the internet. Yeah, those kind of requests so related to the Article Seven is uh, something the central government agency have to uh, follow. Before local government and the business and the central public, like a student, this, this is like a voluntary basis. The most important point is stipulated on the Article 11 of the Green Passing Law. So it says consider the necessary first. So it doesn't make any sense if you buy unnecessary procurement just because the product is environment friendly. Just think about unnecessary first. So in terms of categories, I'm going to show the list of our categories. Uh, since its first publication in 2001, the basic policy has been reviewed every year to increase the number of the designated product uh, and the services and to update environment criteria as well. And the first in 2001, we had only 101 uh, items, but uh, as of the uh, February in 2016, uh, we have 21 categories and 270 items. Next, I'm going to explain the differences. What is the difference between GBP and the ECOMAP programs? And this probably maybe slide is not coming yet. Sorry for the delay. So every time I explain the differences about GPP and the ECOMARC, uh, sometimes uh, some, some people have a difficult to understand because Japanese program is very unique, I think. So uh, please aware of this slide. Uh, so first of all, GPP and the ECOMARC program is a completely different programs. Uh, GPP Green Public Procurement uh, is led by the Ministry of Environment, and it's uh, based on the law, which is a green passing law. But ECOMARC is not related to any law or regulations, just voluntary program uh, organized by the South Party Japan Environment Association. So no legal connection between them. 
So thinking about criteria level uh, for GPP criteria, uh, they set the criteria as a minimum level because if GPP criteria is very strict to meet, so industry, the company, uh, may not be able to provide enough supply so that the demand from government procurement cannot be satisfied. And on the other hand, the ECOMA should, should play a, a role of leading the market. ECOMA should lead the market. So ECOMA try to set our, level, our criteria level as a top 20% market share, I think, as I said, uh, as I said before. So let's quickly look at the uh, criteria requirement to compare. So I just put the example of the stationery uh, made mainly of plastics. So GPP request uh, recycled plastic makes up no less than 40% in weight of the total plastic used, only one request. On the other, on the other hand, the ECOMARC, of course, ECOMARC, ECOMARC has also stationary criteria. So ECOMARC, require, ECOMARC requires the rate of recycled plastics need to be the 70 or more. They also will look at the not only one recycled uh, contents, but also product, product packaging, hazardous substance, and more. And I'm going to show you the more, more easy to image regarding the comparison criteria level in the next slide. And if you have a couple of things I would like you to be aware of. I just put the way of compliance, a key point on the business. And so GPP is not a certification seeking uh, programs and no level reader. And so no third party checks the compliance. So the question is how should keep reliability is that uh, each company have to declare and confirm the compliance with GPP criteria in service. But which is very difficult for especially small companies because they don't have the know-how like uh, what kind of document they should prepare or not enough resources. And uh, on the other hand, as everybody knows, ECOMARC is a third-party uh, third certification programs and type of eco-labeling. So in order to get ECOMARC certified, companies should prepare the documentation for verification. And those documentation, the uh, format are provided by the ECOMARC office. So from the reliable point of view, I would say the ECOMARC is more credible or reliable with the declaration schemes. So sometimes I can hear procurement officers uh, that they would like to uh, make it easier and make it more reliable to identify the green product. So responding, uh, responding to the, those requests, I think ECOMARC is uh, recognized widely as easy to use a tool and a more reliable tool to comply with GPP evaluation criteria. And here's a quick image of the comparison uh, by the GPP and the ECOMARC criteria level. Okay, it's coming. So as I mentioned in previous slide, GPP own criteria is set as a minimum level for the uh, keep it enough supply, while the ECOMARC criteria is a very leadership level. So let's one more time look at the criteria. Uh, example, uh, board point pen. So uh, GPP, uh, in GPP criteria, board point pen must include 40% recycled plastics and more and uh, ECOMARC criteria requires 70% or more. Of course, in addition, uh, ECOMARC criteria requires other requirements such as hazard substance, packaging, plastic marking, blah, 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 blah. So to sum up, to sum up so for overlap, overlap the categories between two programs, so it is understood that most of ECOMARC products can meet GPP criteria. So I'm going to show some support tool for GPP. So in line with publishing basic policy annually uh, from the Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Environment also released a GPP support book for the procurers. This support book explains in easy to understand way. So what is green passing about, basic concept of GPP, very easy explanation of the GPP criteria and the way of compliance. And as everybody see on this slide, this support book uh, introduced ECOMARC law in it and uh, suggested the usage of ECOMARC, which is one of the helpful eco-leveling for verification to GPP criteria. 
There are also Wacomark office uh, released support through support brochure for both brokers and manufacturers. Uh, this book, uh, this brochure shows which Ecomark criteria correspond to the GPP criteria. So as I have mentioned a couple of times already, Ecomark criteria is equivalent or higher than Eco, uh, GPP criteria. So brokers use Ecomark for the difference to meet GPP criteria. And the manufacturers also can take reference from this brochure, so which Ecomark criteria they should apply for, so we all, in order to get the easy access to the GPP. So I think time is running out, so I'll try to make it quicker. So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the monitoring and the achievement of GPP. So monitoring has been taken ever since the Green Passing Law enacted in 2001. So according to Article 7, so all central government agencies are required to submit and publish their own GPP procurement policy at the beginning of the fiscal year. And they also report the annual procurement records to the Ministry of Environment by the end of the June. So procurement record must include the amount and the percentage of purchase of of green product and services. The data from all agencies compiled of Ministry of Environment and published on the MOE environment, Ministry of Environment website and updated every year. And based on compiled data, uh, Ministry of Environment calculated CO2 for the selected items as environmental benefit. And I'm going to show you the example of the uh, reporting form providing by the Ministry of Environment. So central government and other agency download download this form in the Excel format. And they put all the code uh, in the format and they send it to the Ministry of Environment. So they can uh, download it uh, all, all documentation from the uh, URL that I just put in the down. And this is one result of the GPP implementation of the central government in Japan about fluorescent lamps. Uh, you can see the percentage uh, upper line. So you can see that since 2002, the percentage keep uh, more than 90% in 2002. It was 98.1 percentage. I think which is very high. And there's, uh, there is no data showing on this slide, but the percentage of other items are also published, and also their number is very high. Uh, more than 95% of designated items reached uh, higher than GPP rate of 95%. And this is environmental benefit, Mr. Environment calculator every year. And in 2013, some more than 400,000 tons CO2 is reduced. It's equivalent to 239,000 people. And just for your information, the Ecomark office also did survey on the CO2 emission reduction over Ecomark product also in 2014. And the Ecomark product reduced approximately 1 million ton CO2, which is equivalent to annual CO2 emission of 440,000 people. So I guess, uh, you know, GPP calculation, like my calculation, calculation, there must be different methods, so, so I cannot say which is better or not. So uh, this is the last slide. It's about how Japan disseminates GPP. So last year, GPP seminar was conducted in 10 times in the eight big cities, uh, February to March. And the objective is the learning about GPP in the short Following the guys a part of basic policy, and it means also Ministry of, Ministry of Environment release a guidebook, as I said before, and the tools, and the most of them can be downloaded from Ministry of, Ministry of, Ministry of Environment website. I put the URL in the next slide. So I uh, hope everybody uh, thinks it's helpful. So here are the information I put. Uh, sometimes I have to apologize. Uh, some data or some information is available only in Japanese. Only some uh, uh, some documentation available in the English. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I can help you as much as possible. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope my presentation helped helpful. And I'm going to take back to the
Sophie Sang. Thank you, Mr. Kobayashi. We will now take, uh, we have a, a question while we wait for our next uh, panelist, uh, Ms. Jong. It is a question for our colleague, Laura, about CCC. Can you elaborate on what products were already selected? Yes, thank you for the question. So we haven't had a, a done a final selection yet. What we are doing right now is a prioritization of the products we want to work with and um, identify which ones are the products that are most relevant for the region. So, so far we have identified six, six prioritized products. Uh, within construction materials, we have cement. Uh, in lighting, we have fluorescent lamps. In home appliances, washing machines. Uh, in cleaning products, we have detergent. And within office supplies, we have identified toner cartridges and printers. So these are the products that have been um, deemed more important uh, based on this study, based on the potential to reduce environmental impacts, the relevance for GPP and trade, uh, what existing work has been done for the development of common core criteria for these products, and which products need further collaboration. Um, once the final report is available, uh, it will be up for comments. It is possible that we'll be also having a webinar to present the results of this um, report. So we will keep you informed of any developments. And uh, once it's available, we definitely look forward to your comments on the selection of products. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have a question for Mr. Kobayashi. Are you there? Yes. Thank yep, you. I'm here. Yes, we have a question on uh, what to you are the biggest achievements to date uh, in the combined use of GPP and eco-labeling? Yes, uh, I the most achievement between GPP and eco-mark is that uh, 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 eco-mark is a uh, very easy to tool for everybody like procurers and the manufacturers as well. So I think there must be lots of challenging in the Asian countries of how to define, how to identify the green product. But thanks to ECMA programs since the 1989, uh, we have the more than 91% awareness. So they, everybody knows about what ECMA is about. So they can use the ECMA for difference and uh, make it easy, I think. That's why we got a lot of high achievement like a green uh, GPP rate of 95% or so. Okay, thank you very much. And what, according to you, would be um, the key success factors for using eco-labeling uh, in GPP? So this is another question. Yeah, Sorry. Maybe, maybe uh, we can give you some more time uh, if you would like to uh, uh, prepare your answer. And we can now give the floor to Ms. Uh, Zhang Xiaohui. Ms. Ms. Zhang Xiaohui, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, can you please uh, mute? No. Can you please mute uh, your speakers? Uh, sorry, Ms. Zhang, still in another meeting, so perhaps I will uh, take this presentation instead. Sure, uh, sure. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You presenter then. Thank you. So you may now share your screen with us when you are ready. Yeah. Thank you. We can see your screen. Oh. Okay, person, second minutes later. We do not see you. Okay, we can see mm -hmm. you now. Well. Can you, can you see our my screen? Yes. Uh, screen? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's, let's begin. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Zhang Xiaohui from CC R&D Department. Uh, I will say sorry to everybody because our general manager 
Ms. Zhang Xiaodan still is in another meeting, so I will take this presentation instead of her. Sorry. Uh, let's start. Let's start. So I will uh, introduce our CC's business. Uh, this was established in 2003, which is a state-owned, non-profit third-party organization. Uh, CC is also the only authorized national environmental labeling product certification body. Uh, CC has 18 branches now, which are in Shanghai, Guangdong province and places. Uh, there are four main businesses of CEC, uh, including project research, international cooperation, and uh, technical, technical support and certification business. So next. Uh, CEC has always been adhering to the principle of honest and uh, trustworthy engaged in product certification management system, certification, energy management, and low carbon business. Product certification including marketing product, low carbon product, uh, product, many product, and the general natural products. Uh, management system certification including environmental management, uh, quality management, food safety management, and central. Uh, the corporate social responsibility and the enterprise green supply chain management system. Our energy management, including energy, contra con energy contracting, energy saving audit, electro uh, electric design management assessment, and key energy using company energy, CO2 emission management system assessment, etc. Low carbon business including verification and verification of CDN, VCS, TS, uh, WCD, and CTR, carbon nitro, carbon footprint, carbon inventory, etc. Next. Uh, CC has been committed to do research on environmental labeling, environmental management, green public procurement, and green supply chain. These projects have been completed or ongoing research by CC now. Especially in the area of green supply chain, we issued uh, serious specifications of a green supply chain management system. Uh, including some uh, uh, performance evaluation and uh, supplier evaluation, etc. Furthermore, CC has carried out the pilot work for the green selection in Tianjin and Dongguan. Uh, CC applied the results in terms of technical support for the government activity. activity. Uh, it is very important that Chinese green public procurement admitted China to labeling products. Uh, is the, this is the best practice. Uh, CCS, UNAP, SPP, TAN, year for a uh, 10 year program member and MAC member, uh, we fully participant in the work of definition and the contact principles and vision and TPP impacts evaluation and uh, implementation barriers and other uh, and other rules. Uh, So we still, yeah, 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 okay, uh, yeah. We, uh, we have 
uh, cooperated with other international uh, organizations just like uh, RCL, TSC, ETF, and so uh, Next. Yeah, this year, CC has co uh, competed with various international environmental labeling organizations and uh, undertook a few projects research. Uh, we joined in Global Environment uh, Equality Network in 2008 and passed the Genesis Review in 2012. Also became board member uh, at the same year. We already had MRA with Equilabel organization in Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, Nordic, Thailand, Canada, Singapore, Russia, European, and Hong Kong. The total is 12. Next. Um, we have developed research and implemented work in environmental management system, environmental labeling, green construction, green product, and uh, green selection, etc. <coughs> which offer uh, technical spots for Chinese uh, government on supply side structure reform and the green industrial development. Just. Uh, in 1993, the former State Environmental Protection Administration launched the China Environmental Labeling Program. Uh, 2005, CC and uh, Good Environmental Choice Australia, GAITA, sent the first uh, uh, agreement regard to environmental labeling. Meanwhile, as environmental Labeling follow the principle of life cycle, which had a good environmental performance admitted by the Ministry of Finance. In 2006, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Environmental Protection jointly issued a green design policy and issued the first government purchasing list for environmental labeling products. In 2008, CC joined uh, the UN uh, 2012. CC achieved uh, Genesis Review and the uh, Chair of Green awarded the certificate. In 2014, CC held the Environmental Labeling and the Sustainable Conception, the 20th anniversary of the established organization uh, sorry, uh, of the established of China rental labeling activities. Global from the UNEP gene, many countries and the area environmental labeling organization and the representatives of Asian countries, more than two, uh, more than three hundred and fifty people attended the conference. The next uh, after 20 years of efforts, the existing China rental labeling product criteria is 97, involving office equipment as like the computers, printers, scanners, etc., and furniture, household appliance, TV, solar energy, etc., uh, building materials, cement, all kinds of blank coating. Uh, there are more than 4,000 certified capacities. 200,000 kinds of product model. Value of China environmental labeling product, uh, environmental labeling certification products output is more than 2 trillion and <coughs> at a rate of more than 400 new certificate companies in the rights annually. <coughs> Next. <coughs> According to a public influence survey in 2013, 
China environmental labeling recognition rate reached uh, 90 percent, ranked the front front forefront of the various certification. That means China environmental environmental labeling has been deeply around. Uh, this is our uh, test uh, the performance of environmental China environmental labor project in 19 uh, in 2014. Uh, the social efficiency and the leading role of China environmental labeling is obviously uh, from this uh, uh, fr from this research, we found the environmental labeling products can reduce VOC emission by 205,000 tons, according, accounting for 1.7% of the total annual emission of VOCs from industries in China. Uh, reduce the 8.59 million tons of carbon dioxide, dioxide emissions is equivalent to an increase of 4.69 million cube meters of forest oil. The energy saving is 13.32 billion kWh equivalent to 54 percent of the Gajoba power plant capacity uh, throughout the year. Next. Uh, the government procurement system is an important part of the public financial management, as well as effective means for government economy regulation. People's Republic of China government procurement implement since January 1st, 2003. During 10 years, China government procurement grew from small to big, from point to plane. Institutional innovation and constantly improve the mechanism. From the startup stage, to a new stage of comprehensive development. The size of government procurement grew from 13 point billion in 1999 to 1.7296 trillion yuan in, 19, uh, in 2014, accounting for 11.7 percent and 2.9% respectively of the national fiscal expenditure and GDP. Annual growth rate of the scale basically remained at 20%. Next. The scale of China public procurement was expanding. China environmental labeling program was smoothly implementing. Uh, some local government practices and enhanced the public awareness of green procurement created the conditions for China government to implement green procurement. On October uh, 24, 2006, CPP regulation issued opinion of the implementation of green public procurement on environmental labeling product, which was approved jointly by Ministry of Environmental Protection and the Ministry of Finance. Meanwhile, the first DPP list on environmental labeling product was published. The green public procurement on China environmental labeling products was put into practice from January 1st, 2007, in central and uh, principal government authorities, which 
indicated Chinese TPP carrying out officially. TPP was implemented uh, nation, nationwide from January 1st, 2008. Next, uh, based on government statistics, the scale of TPP reached 17.623 uh, billion, for 75.3% of the government procurement of similar products in 2014. Next. Sorry, next. Uh, because the development of China environmental labeling program, especially the scientific scientificness of environmental labeling standards, China established a green public procurement system based on China environmental labeling. Though mark through marketing, China environmental labeling enhanced environmental awareness of enterprise, standardized, standard, uh, standardized uh, environmental behavior, supported the green government procurement, and guided the whole society of green consumption. Government procurement through the demand for green products fosters flight-side structural reform leading green production and fully played the role of government procurement policy. Next. Other product categories in the government procurement list of uh, China environmental labeling products are determined by the MOVE and MIPE according to the type of government procurement items. Uh, intersection with China environmental labeling products category. Based on the needs of development each year, identified new items and uh, topic to the society in advance. Next. This is all the parent product categories of China environmental labeling products in government procurement list. In the 19th list, we intend to increase the projector and the digital stencil duplicator these two product categories. Uh, in the past 10 years of GPP implementation, uh, there are total so, sorry. Uh, there are total seventeen TPP lists has been issued by MOV and MAP jointly. Uh, the the last news is we have issued the eighteenth the, the, the 18 TPP list this afternoon and uh, uh, involved to more than 2,000 uh, companies and uh, more than 200,000 uh, product types. Uh, in the 17th uh, GPP list, there are 44 product categories are related uh, including car, personal computer, uh, copier, printer, IT equipment, and etc. This is uh, our accounting for the GPP uh, benefit. Uh, we assume the government purchases 10,000 printers and 10,000 laptops both in the GPP list product every year. It will reduce dust to, uh, sorry, dust 430 tons and uh, CO2 is 1,575 tons. ISO2 is 47 tons and NOx is 23 0.7 tons. 
this is our assumed. Actually, the actual purchases amount and the category are far more than this. So TDP can bring huge environmental benefit. Uh, next step, we'll work on the following four areas to pro provide technical support for the government to participate in policy research of green public procurement, research on the performance monitoring of green public procurement in China uh, is still in its infancy. We'll gradually increase the research and monitoring the performance of green public procurement and report the results to the government and technical support to make corresponding policies on green public procurement. CDC will establish a green public procurement product database in CTPN site. The database will show the characteristics, technical specifications, green degree of the products so that the, uh, the purchaser and the public could obtain comprehensive product information and achieve real green, per, uh, green procurement and green consumption. Continue to actively participate in the exchange of international experience. Introduce the experience of China green government procurement at the same time learn from international green government procurement experience from others. Uh, so this is our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Zhong. Uh, please stay online for further questions. And uh, we will now go back to our question to Mr. Kobayashi. So which was, um, what are the key success factors for using delivery in GPP? Mr. Kobayashi. So your question is, OK. Uh, your <laughs> question is, uh, what is the key success factor in uh, combining GPP and uh, ECOMARC, is that right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that uh, from ECOMARC side, I would say that uh, what is the key success factor to combining GPP and ECOMARC is, uh, first of all, maybe uh, ECOMARC uh, is very high awareness and the high reliability uh, standard. And uh, we have some discussion with Mr. Mellowman sometimes, uh, discuss about how to the further the work on recuperation. So uh, sometimes we work with Mr. Mellowman, uh, like uh, as I showed the slide, so Mr. Mellowman uh, released the support book for the procurers. They introduced ECOMARC uh, on the support book. And then uh, procurement officer, that, as a national uh, sorry, procurement officer on that uh, organization, that use uh, this kind of support book and uh, they make uh, draft their own procurement policy uh, with ECOMARC in it. And the actual practical, uh, the actual, uh, actual practical practice of the making uh, purchasing, uh, procurement officer use the ECOMAC office to meet GPP criteria. So I would say that what's a key point to uh, combining uh, GPP and uh, GPP and ECOMAC, I would say that maybe a strong deep communication with the uh, government, I guess. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kobayashi. Uh, do we have follow-up questions uh, from uh, other attendees? So if you want to raise your hand, now it's your uh, chance. Any question to our two presenters? Thanks again, and, and I take the opportunity to thank you both for uh, excellent presentations. We now have a, a better view of what you do in your respective countries, and it's quite impressive. 
Uh, I have a follow-up question maybe to Mr. Kobayashi. What are uh, the main challenges that you're facing to develop Ecomark? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, actually, we have a lot of challenge for the Ecomark program, especially that. And uh, somebody see our product list, uh, our category list. So we don't have the finance categories uh, because of the uh, industries industry association. So when we develop criteria, we always consult with industry and the customers and consumers as a expert, blah, blah, blah. So if we cannot get a good appliance, a good support from industry association, we cannot go for it. So uh, our next challenge is to go to the uh, other industry association, uh, which we still don't have the criteria yet and expand the range of our criteria, uh, appliance or other categories, blah, 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 so, and uh, make it more easier and uh, make it more reliable for the uh, consumers. Okay. Thank you. And uh, do you have uh, enough um, financial support or uh, can you balance the, uh, your costs with uh, the incomes uh, when you develop uh, new criteria? Uh, could you say again, please, for example? Sorry? Could you make a point? Yes, because I, oh, I know could that you, say that, again? Uh, you said that you don't get uh, support from government. It's only from nope. uh, the participation of uh, companies uh, that you can uh, balance your expenses and, and cover your costs. So, uh, yep. and I, I guess you need to also update uh, all the uh, criteria and, and uh, you know, work on uh, new labels and update the, the, the previous ones. So this has a cost. So uh, how do you uh, balance all that? Uh, is there a, a tension? Is there an issue with uh, collecting uh, enough uh, revenues to allow you to uh, perform uh, your duties? Okay. Uh, it's a uh, good question. Uh, so the most important thing to the balance I think that you should um, make a good budget on the beginning of the fiscal year and just just keep keep it it I mean uh, our ECOMA program uh, is in a running 100 percent by annual fee and uh, application fee from the company so which is really easier to uh, make a budget because we get a certain amount of uh, money from the companies every year so we just always uh, make a very strict budget, and uh, we just set up committee, uh, talk to the other national, uh, talk to the company, talk to the industry uh, association uh, within the budget. So if we running out of budget, maybe we can go for it. Just try to balance to the make our criteria with other activities as well. Okay, then very useful. Thank you very much. Maybe we can turn to uh, China and ask. Uh some of the same questions. Uh, Sophie? Yes, so the first question was, uh, what are the biggest achievements to date in the combined use of GPP and uh, eco-labeling? Ms. Zhang? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I think the it's it's a it's a big question maybe <laughs> because uh, just like uh, I have said uh, till now we have now accepting the criteria of uh, air flipping is 1997 and we have more than four thousand companies and more than twenty thousand. Uh, products have been uh, certified by environmental labeling and the, the performance or or the benefit from China environmental labeling we can uh, we, we can see the we, um, we reduce the CO2 uh, reduce the NOx reduce the VOC or uh, a central um, uh, 
protein and protein substance. So uh, another achievement we think is our uh, certified result has been admitted by the uh, government and uh, based on China event labeling products uh, ministry, uh, ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Environmental Protection, they established the uh, China GPP uh, implement uh, GPP regulation uh, in 2006, and uh, from from that time, uh, recent uh, the, in the past ten years, China GPP has achieved uh, uh, how to say achieved big achievements, uh, just like we uh, story because now we we have no actual the benefit from China GDP. Uh, it I just uh, uh, assumed the account uh, assumed the, the um, print uh, printers and the laptops of government purchases, uh, and from that we can we we can get the result that TPP can. Uh, bring huge environmental benefits. Uh, this work is our still to research and give uh, actual and uh, real uh, amount uh, amount of GDP benefits. Um, maybe maybe uh, I think so. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, comprehensive answer. Um, thank you both for your interesting presentations and thank you all for attending. You will receive a follow-up email after the webinar and you may view it uh, once it is uploaded on the SCP Clearinghouse YouTube channel. Thank you all. Uh, we will now um, close the webinar and I wish you all a pleasant evening and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.